Hello, fellow vape enthusiasts. Chaos here, coming at you once again. Um, sorry about the hard light coming from over in this direction. My friend has a, or roommate has a wonderful African violet over there that needs its proper sunlight. And since we were indoors, she has one of those great sunlight lamps, and it's finally started to flower, so we're not going to mess with that at all. And just Fortunately, we'll have to deal with a little bit of hard light coming from here. Maybe I can fix it in post, who knows. Um, and I do apologize if you can hear the road noise coming from this direction. Um, that is because the road is about 30 feet that way, so um, yeah, I do apologize for that. But um, on to why we're here today. We're talking about some vape and uh, some drinkies and all sorts of good stuff. Let's start off with the drinks, I guess. Got um, Smith and Forge hard cider here. It is uh, it is awesome. It's very tasty. Let me take a take a sip here. Mmm, so good. I think this is the second time I've had a cider in my videos. So as you can tell, I'm a pretty big fan. Um, only thing I am disappointed in is that I'm drinking this out of a can. Um, I am like a hypocrite. Granted, it's delicious hypocrisy, but I'm a hypocrite because I always rag on uh, craft companies that put their their delicious beverages in cans because it, it wrecks the flavor. It gives it this tinny flavor. And um, when we start drinking barrel-aged craft beverages, you realize that, wow, you really can taste the metal. Even in a glass bottle, you can still taste a little bit of metal in in that dryness and that, and that aftertaste. But nevertheless, it's a really tasty beer. Or beer. Yeah, awesome. It's a really tasty cider, and if you do get a chance to uh, to buy it, I would suggest doing so. Um, but on to why we're really here, on to what, what this is all about, uh, vaping and, and the lovely awesomeness of vaping. Hmm. Oh, I hope you're vaping right along with me and tooting when I too, because uh, it's a good time. Uh, this is... Uh, peanut butter I'm enjoying in this this uh, Helios clone on top of a yeah, yeah, little hammer hammer uh, styled e-pipe mech mod e-pipe so very good and it hasn't even really warmed up yet <coughs> sorry this is 24 milligram, and I am not used to such high nicotine levels. <coughs> but it was all they had in the peanut butter flavor. They didn't have any low, so I couldn't couldn't get any low. But this was a, uh, a VG water blend, and uh, <coughs> that's part of. Hold on, let me. Oh. Let me put this down for a little while. Um, that's part of what I wanted to talk to you guys about today is um, the disappearing act of PG and how how much of a bad rap it's been getting lately, and how much how much people aren't using it anymore. I guess is the overall theme of this. You know, a lot of. Uh, these these custom blends with the exception of going online and buying it online but all these at least where I am and vaping really hasn't reached its peak like it has in places like California and Florida and other parts of the US and even but you know I watch like Todd's reviews and and things like that and I see people in other countries with more more availability more brick and mortars and things like that than what I have here, and uh, it's a little discouraging, but at the same time, it uh, it pushes me to want to learn more and gain more and then pass that knowledge on, so my experience at brick and mortars is usually let's buy a couple things, maybe a couple bottles of juice, maybe a, um, a clearomizer or something to, to support them, but I'm also there to, and <laughs> I know this is going to sound wicked arrogant, but I'm there also to educate them, because as I've heard multiple times, I'll walk into a shop and they'll, whoa, I've never seen that that PV before. And it's something simple like, 
you know, my sit or my eye taste, you know, and like, um, the things like the eye tastes are now the last shop I walked into the guy's like, Oh yeah, I have that in one of my books. And he pulls out an Anakin book and it's got like all the Anakin gear. So I'm like, okay, so this guy's going to start carrying cross my fingers. This guy's going to start carrying Anakin. Um, so I said to him, like, the, the MVP too, man, you can't beat it. It's, it's like the next step up in regulating devices. You know, he had mentioned about how he had bought, um, I think it was a spinner or a twist for his wife or whatever. And, um, he was really impressed with that. And so I said, you know, okay, this is the next logical step up from that. You know, maybe even a SID might be a little bit more advanced than, than a, uh, an eye taste just merely for the range and uh, and the overall design and everything this is a little a little bigger of a step up you know you're starting to put your own types of batteries in things like that but I'm digressing hugely um yeah liquid when I first started it was like PG was the place to be and that rhymed <laughs> wow anyways um I was doing 80-20 you know, PG being 80 and 20 being VG, and yes, I I have stepped down from that. Now I'm running 50-50 blends, about gonna push towards higher VG, but um, the one thing I've noticed is, is flavor decreasing, you know, and that was the, the other thing I noticed with all these shops carrying blends like this one, which is, uh, the, are water in VG, distilled water in VG. Um, it has more flavor than just 100% VG juices, but not as much as PG. I don't know why, um, but it definitely doesn't. And I mean, it could be the steeping times are different. Maybe I need to steep them for longer or something, but um, this juice isn't even a pre-made. This was, the guy just buys his juices and has them shipped in. It's a U.S. vendor, so there's, I didn't have a problem with that. It wasn't like China juice or anything, but it was still disappointing. I would rather, like one of my other local vape shops, the guy makes his own flavors and things like that. So it's a much more enjoyable experience when you can go in there and tell the guy, oh, yeah, this banana cream is awesome, but I would tune up the cream a little bit, step down on the banana because I'm just getting this strong, heavy banana punch, and then the cream's coming in a little bit later, or something like that, you know, like, apple crisp tastes too much like graham cracker, and not enough like apple, or, you know, it's, it's a tart apple, not a sweet apple, where an apple crisp should be a sweet apple, things like that, um, you can really help these people out, you know, it, but flavor is so subjective, it's hard, I'm, it's always like walking on eggshells with these people, because, it's like telling a painter that their painting is terrible and, oh, well, if you used a different brush stroke, then maybe you would achieve a different, you know, like how, how big headed would I come off seeming like I can tell you how to mix your juice better. I just always try to be helpful, I guess, is the overall approach I have when entering in a vape shop um, and chatting with the guy, you know, or, or woman, whoever, the owner. I love chatting with the owners because... Um, most of the time it, it, they know what they're talking about and uh, and it it feels like I'm talking to someone on the same level where most of my vape talk with people with strangers is what is that you know what what's going on there and uh, is that a cigarette is that is that drug paraphernalia is the other one I get all the time so most of my conversation is from non-educated vapors, so walking into a vape shop is, like, finally where I can get an outlet to talk to people about vape that know anything, besides you guys, obviously. And that's why I love making these videos, because I feel connected to this community, and uh, it is a great time. But I'm digressing again, man, that's what this video is all about, just me not... <laughs> not keeping on target, not keeping straight. Maybe I can blame it on the cider, who knows. But let's let's get into the coil, shall we? Um, I'm calling this the happy accident coil, and uh, I will mention that I had shot a, uh, a segment uh, on how to wrap the coils to get them started, and uh, 
what I did not know is that the camera wasn't rolling so I don't have any of that stuff and uh, I do have like the second half of it which is the installation of the coils and the uh, the wicking and all that stuff so instead of going back and taking my whole build apart and everything else um, and then lying to you guys and saying I'm vaping the same build I, I did in the video Oh man, it's taste in it not really being that same build. I feel like that wouldn't be fair to you. So, this is the actual build I built in the video. I just won't be able to show you the beginning part of me wrapping the coils. And to be honest, you don't really need to see it. If you don't know how to wrap coils, then don't watch this rebuilding segment because it's not for beginners. It's not for first time vapors. It's for people who know how to build say a nano coil if you can build a nano coil you can build this coil that kind of knowledge is what you're going to need um, so what I actually use so you have an idea um, because that is also information that's missing is I used a 3 32nd drill bit to wrap the coils around I used 30 gauge A1 Canthal to create the coils and I did five wraps. Um, not that it makes a difference because everyone um, has a different experience when wrapping coils and they'll get, end up getting different reading. But I ended up getting like a 7.9 something. That is actually in the video. I actually attach it to the, uh, to the ohm meter and let you know the resistance. But um, yeah, I built two identical coils and then I actually squished them. That is in the video you see it getting squished, but that's that's an intentional thing to kind of flatten out the coil. And my whole idea with this build is um, I noticed things like in the dragon coils, and then I started getting into like uh, super nanos and nano coils, and uh, into the cotton cloud experience. And I realized that it's not always, that there's a lot of different phys things of physics going on inside these coils. And um, the way the coils are built and the way they're wicked will change the vape experience. And it allows you to tailor your vape experience to what you want. So, um, you know, like the Super Nano where your heating element isn't very large and you want a lot of air to get to it. Um, sitting it on top of a cotton cloud is a good idea, and so is this. And some of the other coils I've been playing around with, like most of the coils recently I've been shown, uh, my intent has been to heat up the wick as much as humanly possible. And that was my thought with this coil. Um, or why I continued to pursue this coil um, was because it created this large heating surface area that the would sit on top of the cotton and really just produce some some good flavor vapor um, what how I found out about this this design and this build was actually an accident and hence why I call the coil the happy accident coil um, I had built a um, what does he call it um, I think it's M MC Vapes came up with this idea called the cottontail coil build is what it was called and it was basically a dual coil built from one length of canthal and um i have to give him props this was like one thing that got me into like wow i can do something more than just wrap you know a coil around some wick and throw it on an atomizer i can really start playing around with this and having some fun so i digress i had it um in a little phoenix rebuildable atomizer and um, it ended up touching one of the posts. I don't know. It must have fallen or something. So I was in there readjusting it. I had the coil with my pliers. I'm kind of moving it. And then my finger slipped and I ended up squeezing the whole coil. And then, you know, it just flattened that coil right around the wick. And I was like, oh, this is terrible. This is awful. And I'm looking at it. I'm like, Ugh. and then I'm like, hmm. Well, and I started to squeeze the coil and just kind of squeeze it and like, set it so that each individual wrap had a good distance between it 
and then I started vaping it. I'm like, why, why? The, the particular build was awesome, and the coil was performing amazing for me, and I didn't want to get rid of it, so I just figured let's just keep trying it, and I vaped on it like that for a good deal of time, and one day I ended up not dripping when I should have, and it ended up burning the cotton out, and then I realized, okay, you can't feed the cotton through the center of this coil. This would have to be a coil that would be totally flattened and just either had cotton wrapped around it or sitting in it. And initially I had done it with coil with cotton wrapped all around the coils and it just didn't get enough oxygen to the coil to produce good vapor. So actually for the first time in this video, I uh, rested on a cotton cloud and it performs awesome. It really does perform well. But yeah, so the coil was a total accident. Definitely was not not planning on creating a build like this, but once I had uh, made the mistake and vaped on it for a little while, then I started uh, really playing around with it. This is this particular build has got to be the third or fourth time I've tried building this coil, and each time changing it slightly differently. This time I spaced my wraps out a lot more, and it's it's performing very well. Like I said, just crazy, crazy flavor. Not the most amazing vapor in the world. Again, uh, it's a 0.7 build. It's not in the low side of sub-ohm. So lower you go, the hotter it's going to be, the more vape. If I was using something with a higher um, VG content, not, I think this is 50-50 water VG, VG. So maybe if it was more VG, I'd have bigger clouds. But whatever, you know, tailor, tailor it to your vape. I'm not a huge giant plume fan. I like it for the showy purposes, but on uh, average everyday vape, I'm, I'm chasing flavor is what I'm chasing. So yeah, it's, a, it's an awesome coil. Um, I guess I'll take it off and show it to you one last time. Not that you won't be able to see it in the rebuilding segment, but yeah, uh, I feel like I'm rambling, and uh, this video has definitely gone on long enough, so uh, thank you guys for watching, I encourage you to uh, to continue to watch through the re half of the rebuildable segment, I guess, um, and uh, yeah, post comment below, feel free. Um, I try to respond as quickly as possible, um, and uh, you know I'm I'm willing to uh, give you information on whatever you need to know, and uh, just chat in general, you know. All right, sorry about that, guys. I had the thing mounted. The yeah, I had the thing. I had the camera nicely mounted on my head, so that way I could ensure that things are always in frame for you guys. I've started doing that with my videos and I think it's a pretty cool format unfortunately the battery in my camera has died so it has to be mounted static so that way it can charge while I uh, shoot the rest of this video mm. so I do apologize for that drinking uh, as I had mentioned before some of that Smith and Forge hard cider delicious stuff but why don't I find a better spot for that so it's not constantly in frame? So, back to what I was doing, squishing coils. I could not figure out which side of this coil I wanted to squish. So I'm just going to shoot in the dark and squish it. Oh my god! Okay, so that was squished. Um, one of the things I must mention to you guys is the spacing in between each of these. It's not essential, like you're not going to cause massive issues if you don't adjust the spacing of the coils, but to get ideal vapor production and to prevent like burning one specific area of the cotton, I suggest that you kind of space your coils out a bit. You can do that by holding a section of the coils with a pair of pliers or tweezers and then using another pair of pliers or tweezers kind of pull each individual ring apart and yes I understand that this seems like a lot of work um, but it's worth it the vapor production is actually pr 
pretty good. Um, pretty good. Yeah, that's convincing. Um, it is very good, and the flavor is insane. The flavor is really where this coil shines. Um, but yeah. So I'm going to go through and space these coils all out nice and evenly, and then I will come back to you for the um, attachment to my atomizer, checking the resistance and all of that fun stuff. So as you can see, we've got those coils spaced out nicely now. Um, if you did see my sneak peek, you probably saw version 1, which had the coils much closer together. It's all up to you, really. Um, so, let's take my dripper here off my Kato Hammer clone. Screw it right on this ohm meter and then slide your posts in just slide them in I've taken my screws completely out on this one um, just because it makes it much easier another thing I've noticed that not many other people have mentioned so far but if you do have a nice long coil like these you can um, skip a post hole so like most of the time people will go from one post to the post directly next to it in this build I'm going from one post skipping that one and going to the other one they're both center post so it works out well and then you have a bigger gap between leads and now we will take our little bolts here a little set screws by the way don't ever lose these things they are not easy to replace I thought I could just go to the hardware store and buy them. Yeah, right. No way. I looked at the guy. I'm like, uh, where's your set screws? He's like, oh, they're right here. And I'm like, yeah, I already looked through that drawer. You got anything smaller? And he's like, yeah, we got a couple smaller. How small are you looking for? And I had one of these in my, in my pocket in a plastic bag. And I'm like, this is what I'm looking for. He's like, holy shit. She, you know, I'm like, dude, really? It's not that small. He's like, that thing's tiny, it's freaking tiny, where the heck did that come from? An electronic what? Yeah, buddy. That's why you work at Home Depot. No offense to anyone who works at Home Depot. I'm sure you do an excellent job. But not at my local one. Now I'm just kind of positioning these coils in like any other coil. You do not want them to touch your uh, your posts whatsoever, or your base, or anything, really. Kind of want to just keep them nice and flat and not touching anything. Kind of like that. See, that's a good good coil placement. It's in there, nice. Tighten that sucker down. Be very careful because it will snap. And then we'll just pull these leads out of the way. And slide in the next coil. This one goes in there. And this one goes in there. Perfect. Okay, so let me actually do that more on camera again. You kind of want to try and, once you get that lead through both sides, you kind of want to get it up and out of the way of the other coil so it doesn't slide in between or do something silly. And then just put your other two set screws in there. With the little tool provided. It's another thing I hope I never ever lose is this tool because... I've never seen such tiny Allen wrenches.
There we go. Let's just trim these leads now. Get in there nice and tight. Freezing. And just clip off these wires. Boop. Don't play games with me. There we go. Clip another wire here. It's all nice and cleaned up. Got all the coils in there. Kind of tighten and straighten them down a little bit. Doom, doom. Make sure nothing's touching. See, like right there, it looks like one of the leftover chunks of canthal lead is touching the other coil. So bend that up out of the way. Make sure it does not do that. Make sure there's clearance behind that coil. Make sure there's clearance. So this is a good way to check clearance, at least I'd like to check my clearance, is I'll take something thin like my tweezers and just run it between the coil and the posts to make sure there's nothing touching. And I do that with all my coils. 7.92, so pretty high, but not bad. And it's a solid 7.92. It's almost, almost 0.8 ohms. Pretty sweet. Let us pop this bad Rubino on this clone, hammer clone, spark her up. Oh, look at those things glowing pretty. Isn't that pretty? That is one thing about this coil build. It is, you got some pretty glowing coils. And now we get to the big question of wicking. How the flip do we wick this thing? I have tried many a different methods. Um, when I first started out, I was wrapping wick around it. That did not work. Um, did many of things. I'm going to try, and I'm doing this. <laughs> do not know why. It's a terrible idea, but I'm doing it for the first time on video. I'm going to try a straight cotton cloud, just a regular, ordinary cotton cloud. Um, the last thing I did, and what has been somewhat effective so far, is um, building almost like a cotton cloud and then wrapping a chunk of that cotton through the gap we have right here between these posts. I was taking the cotton, filling it all under here wrapping it over and laying it on top so that the sides and one of these sides was exposed um, to oxygen because um, you have to have a certain amount of canthal exposed to oxygen or you're not going to create any vapor um, you're just totally drowning it out uh, almost like when you put too much wood on a fire you need oxygen to um, create smoke or vapor you can't create smoke or vapor without oxygen. So I'm just taking a chunk of cotton here, kind of fluffing it up, getting it nice and cloud-like, and we will just slide that right underneath there. Not much cotton, doesn't, doesn't require a whole lot. Just enough to kind of, a nice little cloud for the coil to sit on. Now we apply juice. Give me one quick second. Go here. Don't know if they put food coloring in this or not, but this is the weirdest colored peanut butter I've ever seen. But it is pretty close in flavor. If we had smell vision, I'm telling you, all you would be smelling right now is peanut butter because the juice is. He nutty. Mm. 
And there you have it. A happy accident. Producing good quality, high flavor vapor. It's not always about the density. Sometimes it's just about the flavor. And let me tell you, this coil definitely produces that. So, uh, thank you for watching, and, uh, may your tanks be full, may your wicks be moist, may your hearts be warm, people.